What's good, YouTube, man? It's your boy Gabe with the Hood Fan TV. Back at you, another video. Like the content in this video, go ahead and smash that like button. Like the content in this channel, go ahead and hit subscribe, man. Uh, listen, the Ravens win 13 to three. Not overall very impressive, but a W is a W. So we're gonna recap the game. You know how we do. We're gonna give our stand-up performers. Uh, then we're gonna go through the game and talk about some big moments in the game, and uh, you know, give an overall conclusion about what happened out there these last three hours. Uh, you know, four quarters of football. And see what we can talk about going forward. All right. Um, first of all, I want to start off where obviously the offense wasn't very impressive today. Um, the defense did its thing, held the Panthers to three points. The Panthers never looked like scoring throughout the entire game. Uh, the one drive where they did get it going, end up getting that three was aided by pass interference. So shout out to the Ravens defense. Big time performance. All right. So what I want to do is I'm going to get to the standard performance. I know I said what I said about the offense, but there is one guy that really, really stood out, and his name is Demarcus Robinson. Um, nine catches, so nine targets, nine catches, 128 yards, uh, 14.2 yards a catch, and he was great today. The Ravens found a success, I would say, doing one thing, uh, out routes. A lot of, a lot of out routes, Mark Robinson had an out route that he caught for about nine, but he got an extra four yards, got the, got the first down, and it was like third and 13. He had another one where he caught for about five, that was another first down. So they found a lot of success with out routes, not just the Robinson. They did some to uh, Andrews as well. So pass the game, found success in that way. And he had a big play um, in that two minute drive. Really, it was a four minute drive because Ravens got the ball all the way back at the, uh, you know, within their almost their ten yard line, fifteen yard line. And uh, him and him and Lamar Jackson connect for a big, big play, uh, about thirty yard gain, nice little slant post over the middle. Um, Marcus Robinson looked good, bro. He looked good. So long story short, he looked good. I believe this was his second 100-yard game of his career. I think that's what the stat I saw. So, big-time game, man. You know, the last time the Ravens had a receiver go for, you know, 128. Seems like a little bit of a little bit of time, you know. So, that's a, that's a big game. Um, so, I got to give him a stand-up performer. Um, so, shout-out to Demarcus Robinson. All right. Now, I want to move to the defensive side of the ball because these are the guys that really shined out there today. Um, I'm going to give it to two players. So, the first player we're going to talk about, all-pro Marlon Humphrey. Um, he's doing it again. So, we're talking about a guy, right, you know, only two tackles, right? So, not like that, but he did catch an interception that pretty much sealed the game. And also, he had a couple of good knockouts in coverage. Um, he's playing at a level where if it's him and a receiver, I'm thinking Marlon Humphrey's winning every single time. That's the kind of level he's playing at right now. And um, the Ravens need it, bro. The Ravens really, really need it. Uh, so, this is the guy that the Ravens signed to that $100 million contract or 98 whatever it really was. Um, he's back to that being that guy. And you love to see it. Marlon Humphrey is an all-important player for the Ravens. So um, I'm happy to see Marlon Humphrey playing that way. I'm happy to see him shining out there. Uh, so he definitely gets a standout performer for me. All right. Now, honorable mention, I still want to give honorable mention to Roquan Smith. He's out there flying. Um, once again, same thing I said for the Saints game. When he tackles a guy, he's on the ground. There's no missed tackles. There's no chance of slipping out. Uh, you on the ground. Tackle, he had a tackle for loss today. Uh, he got a couple pressures back there. Almost got a sack. It was him, PQ, and I think Justin Houston met at Baker. Uh, but I think only PQ and Houston will get, will get credit for that. Probably just uh, Patrick Queen, honestly. Uh, but leading into that, transition into Patrick Queen, he is my third standout performer today. Okay, We're talking about 12 total tackles, 9 solos, a 1 tackle for loss, and a half a sack. So they, so they, give, so they did give him a half a sack on that play. All right, so Patrick Queen has taken his game to another level since that, uh, what was it, week four or five versus the Bengals. That week that was that we played Bengals Sunday night. Patrick Queen has pretty much been on another level since that game, all right? And he's starting to do it consistently. When now with Roquan next to him, he's, he's even more freed up, even more ability to roam around, make plays, and just really be that all-around attacking linebacker. Uh, so I love to see him Patrick Queen. This duo of Roquan and Patrick, and Patrick Queen can be something that the Ravens can – Push forward for at least the next couple years, you know. Obviously, it comes time to pay for Patrick Queen. We'll see if the Ravens decide to do that. That's still up in the air. But we're talking about right now, this season, this is a beautiful duo going forward. Honestly, it really is. Um, two young, fast, attacking linebackers who are uh, who are missiles to the football. So, that's that, that's beautiful to see. So, those three guys are my standout performers for this game. Uh, so, you got Demarcus Robinson on offense, Patrick Queen, and Marlon Humphrey on defense. It could have been a lot more guys on defense, honestly. You know, like I said, Roquan's honorable mention. Um, Calais Campbell comes down with a sack. Uh, 
I thought Kyle Hamilton before he went out played really, really well. Marcus Peters um, was up and down a little bit, but he comes up with a strip, ends up with five tackles, so a pretty good game from him. Um, Justin Houston gets in there with a half a sack. So, you know, the Ravens had an all-around effort. JPP gets a couple of tackles and an interception off the tip past the end of the game. So the defense, the defense played a really, really good game. It could have been a couple of guys, but to me, uh, Marlo, Patrick Queen, standout performance. Uh, so give me your standout performance in the comments for sure. Uh, let me know who you guys got. Now let's get into this game recap because we got to talk about how this game played one through four. Uh, the first quarter, I thought the offense was very, very sluggish. They came out trying to throw the ball, which is fine because this is the same thing I talked about. They need to get this passing game in rhythm. I think the first drive was pretty much all pass plays, if I'm not mistaken. So I like that, but you know, they, they it just wasn't connecting, right? And I'm not going to hear the thing about the wide receivers not getting over because the Marcus Robinson had 100 plus yards, he had 120 yards, all right? Mark Andrews had, I think, another 60 yards or so, eight, eight targets, 60 yards, six catches for Mark Andrews, right? So, I'm just not sure what the missing link is. Uh, besides change the offense entirely, I'm not sure what the missing link is, all right? Um, but anyway, so first quarter, like I said, offense a little sluggish. Screen play for Justice Hill gets blown up. And I'm mentioning that play specifically because the screen game did not work today. It really did. Either the play was blown up. Or it was a drop by Kane Drake, or it was just um, a play that just went nowhere today. The screen game was just not effective. Now that doesn't mean to stop calling screens. I like, I like the Ravens. I like the fact that Greg Roman attempted to call screen plays. And it just didn't work out today. That's it. <coughs> now the run game was getting stuffed a lot, but Lamar Jackson started to get going, so that helped out the QB run game. Uh, first quarter for the defense, I thought Kyle Hamilton played really well. He's aggressive. Uh, one play, they, they throw a little swing bubble pass. He he pushes his blocker into the guy who has the ball and ends up making a tackle. I, I love that play. Kyle Hamilton is playing fast. He's not thinking. He's just going. So he did get injured later in the game. I'm hoping that Kyle Hamilton's all right. Um, so you know, we'll, we, you know, we'll update that when when it comes out. Um, so I thought about the blitz. Patrick Queen, Roquan, um, Justin Houston, all meet at the quarterback. That half a second still be up between Ro oh, sorry, with Patrick Queen and Justin Houston. Um, defense wrapping is, is wrapping up, flying around. They're making tackles. I'm not seeing that same Ravens defense who was missing a lot of tackles. I'm not seeing that. So that's good. That's that's a great sign. Um, second quarter, Ravens punt, running game, getting stuck. Demarcus Robinson, like I said, making a good catch. Uh, then Lamar Jackson throws a puzzling interception right to a defensive tackle. Um, just he had a little bit of pressure on him. I'm not gonna say he didn't. But he just threw it a little bit too low, and it's ended up hitting the defensive tackle right in the hands. Uh, the guy that is coming behind him is open. Um, I can't remember who it was. But then if you look behind him, there's like another crosser coming around. I think that's Josh Oliver that's coming wide open. But, you know, who knows? He probably was already off that progression by the time he threw that pass. But Lamar, if you're going to throw that, obviously he knows he got to throw it a little higher. That play was just a little perplexing just to throw an interception right to the defensive tackle. So it was just a little perplexing. Because the guy really didn't even have to jump for the ball. All right. Um... So anyway, so the Ravens offense, I see they, 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 I put down right here in my notes. When it's four minutes left, they need, they need a big drive right here. And the Ravens deliver. They get a drive because the game is 0-0. I mean, we're talking about the Panthers are one of the worst teams in the NFL as it currently stands. And the game is 0-0 with a team that has uh, playoff aspirations, first place in their division. All right? It's not acceptable at this point in time. Um, but like I got a lot of quick out routes, especially to Robinson. Like Isaiah likely had a drop in there, but then DeMarcus Robinson comes down with that big catch that we talked about when we talked about him as being a stand-up performer. So that was great. But the Ravens stole at the end of the half and went at about like the 15-yard line or so, just took a field goal. And um, yeah, man, the half is 3-0. The defense played pretty good in the second quarter. Marlon Humphrey had a great knockout on a, I think it was a tight end coming across the field. Knocked the ball out. That was great. Uh, so an incomplete pass on that one. Roquan had had tackle for loss. The defense, the defense was doing their job. It was beautiful. Um, Panthers didn't look like doing anything. They had a couple of good run plays. Uh, Baker threw a couple of okay passes. Like he was eight for ten for like forty six yards, which is not nothing that was hurting the Ravens. You know what I mean? So, uh, but overall, defense played well. I had no problem with the defense. Um, so third quarter, uh, Panthers get the ball three and out. Ravens get the ball three and out. The one running play that really, really worked for the Ravens today was the draw play. And they ran it about three, four times to Justice Hill in particular. And he got somewhere between five and plus yards running these draw plays. Um, this is what I'm talking about in the third quarter. He got 10 yards. So that was a play that they kept going back to and they kept working. 
Um, so that was good to see. Um, another big throw to Demarcus Robinson. Then a strike to Mark Andrews. So now the offense is moving, right? We're thinking the offense is moving. But unfortunately, Morgan Moses gets called for a face mask. And um, it looked like it really could have just been illegal hands to the face. But they called it a full face mask. which pushed the play back 15 yards. So instead of the five, big time play. Um, next play, Lamar gets sacked because Morgan Moses lets a free rush to go. I'm not blaming down on Morgan Moses. He has to choose. Is either the guy coming inside or the guy coming outside? I believe. Now, somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Old line, when I talk to let the outside guy go, that gives the quarterback a chance to escape around the outside. Because if you let the inside guy go, it's a better chance for that guy to tackle the QB, right? So Morgan Moses did what he thought was best and took the took the inside guy, right? It didn't work out. The real unfortunate part about that play is that Lamar gets sacked, one, and two, ends up rolling up on Ronnie Stanley's ankle, all right? Then Ronnie Stanley's out for the rest of the game. Patrick McCarty comes in. So that's another guy. I'm lying there with Kyle Hamilton. We'll see what the update is on Ronnie Stanley, bro. Uh, John Harbaugh didn't give any injury updates after the game. Uh, he never does that. So we'll see what happens, all right? Um, and then the third part about that sack is it took the Ravens out of field range. So a trifecta of just bad misfortunes right there. Um, defense more the same, though. You know, uh, Hamilton had a... Had an injury, leg of the knee injury. We'll see what happens with that. Like I said, Chuck Clark is a passing interference. Uh, Panthers keep the drive in a little bit, but uh, that's what really puts him in the red zone. Then JPP gets a big tackle for loss. Then Brandon Steven gets a good breakup on Terrence Marshall Jr. Uh, Panthers still in the red zone. Now it's 3 3. All right. Um, there's a big punt. Chuck Clark is the face match down there, but doesn't do anything. Panthers end up punting 3 3. Fourth quarter, the Ravens are 3 3 with the Carolina Panthers. And. Um, it's just an all-around disappointing showing, bro. Um, fourth quarter, Demarcus Robinson again, back-to-back three, back-to-back catches for Mark Andrews. Lots of draw plays and Justin Hills. I describe again, um, but then crucial delay of game, bro. Crucial delay of game. Uh, too many penalties. Ravens have something like seven, eight penalties for over like sixty yards in the game. Uh, let me see if I can get the exact amount. Uh, Ravens have 10 penalties in total. The Panthers have nine themselves. Uh, you still don't want to have that many penalties. Even if the Panthers are close to you, 10 penalties is way too many penalties. Um, anyway, Ravens stall in the red zone, 6-3 now. All right. Um, so this is when Marcus Peters, right? <laughs> he almost stops playing again, just like the, the play last, well, not last week, the last time the Ravens played was the Saints, when he thinks Jawan Johnson's out of bounds and just stops playing. This time, he thinks that either he's, his, his push is enough to get Shot Smith to the ground. It's not. Uh, Shot Smith keeps playing. But luckily for Marcus Peters, he gets a strip. All right? Big play for the Ravens. Big time. Um, and that kind of starts the, the end of the game, really. Uh, King and Drake gets a big run off of that. Lamar Jackson gets a touchdown. Game over 13-3, really. Um, after that, Lamar Marlowe gets an interception. Ravens get the ball back. Don't do anything with it. And then um, pretty much end the game off. Roger Washington tips a pass right to Jason Pierre. Paul, game over. Ravens win 13-3. Um, and one of the more less impressive wins that you're going to see this season. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try to wrap the video. I don't want to get too long. It's already, uh, you know, at, at this point now. But uh, the Ravens were just, our offense was disappointing. This is the kind of game I was talking about when we did the game preview. Me and my guy Nevin. That I did not want to see. I did not want to see the Ravens come out slow, play down to level competition, not really put their foot on the neck of their opponents. But hey, look, the Panthers, like we always say, yo, they're an NFL team too. These guys get paid as well. Uh, but doesn't make the doesn't make this game any less disappointing offensively, right? And I'm not pointing a finger at any one guy because it, it all could, it all could go around. I didn't think Lamar played bad today. I really didn't. Uh, he didn't really miss any throws, uh, in my opinion. It just didn't look like things were clicking on offense, bro. That's just what it was, right? Um, but these are the kind of games that you just can't afford to have, all right? Um, you got to blow these teams out that you're supposed to blow out. But at the end of the day, the Ravens get the W, right? We'll probably talk some more about this kind of game tomorrow and uh, see what we think about it going for the, the rest of the season, right? But that's your Ravens versus Panthers game recap. The Ravens win 13-3, a game that's a little disappointing. But a W is a W at the end of the day, and you got to take what you can get. The Ravens moved to 7-3 on the season. Play the Jacksonville Jaguars next week. 
looking to get another W on the road. And that's what it is, man. That's just what it is. On to the next week, bro. Uh, so give me your uh, stand-up performance in the comments. Give me your thoughts about the game. Um, were you impressed? Were you disappointed? Things like that. Uh, it's your boy Gabriel. Just on the Fan TV. I'm out.